Imagine a world where you can remove any object or person from your photos with just a few clicks. Your ex-partner, gone. Your annoying neighbour, poof, vanished into thin air. This is the kind of world that could be a reality. That's if Jenna Race delivers on its promises. Does Luminario's Jenna Race actually live up to the hype? Let's find out. Hi all, my name's Ben here at Ben's Guide. Thanks for watching the video today. It's always great to have you join. Let's get in to the good stuff. When you get Generace, where will you find it? Well, it's actually simple to find in the catalog tab, and then you'll see it here, Generace. Now, what I wanted to make this video today is to see how it performs because I was given a coupon code to give to you guys if you're in the market for this. It's 31%, it's a big saving, but first watch the video and see what you think. Don't go getting it if it's not for you. The Generace tool setup itself is really simple. You've got Generace here, then you've got the zoom in feature where you can zoom in closer to the actual image that you're looking at. You can come off this and then when you've made a change, you can actually go into the before and after, which is the eye right there. You've then got select. To actually paint over an area, to select the area that you want to remove, you would choose the select option. So if I come out a little bit here and go to fit to screen, what we're going to start by doing is selecting this very interesting looking building, which I believe is a lighthouse, and then we're going to paint over it using the Generace brush. Now, when you've painted over the area, all you have to do is go to erase. And what that's going to do is it's going to try and erase this from the image. Okay, that's taken about 35 seconds of loading time, which is a fair bit of time, but it's not too bad. We'll see how that loading time really holds up when we get into more complex erases. Uh, I won't even say what that red mark looks like there, <laughs> but what you can do now is you can reset the selection. I can see that the selection is looking great. I've got the mountain in the background. I do seem to have this kind of shadowing effect in the background as well, which I'm probably gonna try and take care of with another paint over it. I'm gonna reset the selection, which is gonna take us back to base level. And then I'm going to try and paint over here a little bit. And hopefully it's gonna start blending in with the sky a bit more. But as you can see, it's done a great job of removing the lighthouse. Okay, so that's finished about another 30 seconds later. And then if we reset the selection, we can see that that blends in a lot nicer. It's took two erases to really take care of the job. Let's look at the reflection because we don't want this reflection with the lighthouse in it. You can see the lighthouse in the reflection here. We've got to remove that because it's not going to look right if we don't. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. It's a bit too close in here. It's 50%. And then I'm going to paint over this area and then let's see how it works. Once again, you don't have to be really kind of strict with the way you paint here. You can be quite rough. You can go over the edges. It's going to pick up detail from the edges here. And I'm even going to paint over this rock and see how well it does. Okay, that's done. Let's have a look. And that's actually got rid of that really well. We've got this kind of strange anomaly here. I don't know what that is. It almost looks like a frog in the water. Let's reset the selection and then just quickly paint over that and just take care of that to fix it. Okay, we've taken care of the frog, but we've got this little weird patch here, which is just a little bit kind of lighter. But if we just go to reset the selection and then paint over this, hopefully it'll do the same as what happened in the sky and blend the color better. Now we're talking, we've got it looking exactly right. Now this wasn't the most difficult image to erase things from, but what I will say is if we come out to fit the screen, it's done a very good job. It really fits. Everything that was erased, you wouldn't know there'd been anything erased, in fact. It really works well. Let's move on to something that's a bit more tricky, a bit more difficult, and then test it. I saw this picture of these deer here, and I thought this would be a good one to test it. If we click this and open it up in Generace, why this is a good testing image is because you have this deer in the background here, and it's sitting behind the front deer. Now, the leg 
he's kind of intersecting between the body of the deer at the back. What Generace has to do is computate the details here together to really work out what's foreground and what's background and what's separate from the other. Let's paint over this area. By the way, if you just want to make your brush bigger, you can do it here. Or if you want to do it quicker, what I think I'll use is just to use the left and right bracket key. Now I'm just going to paint over this deer, doing a real rough job here of painting over the deer. And I'm actually going to include some of the leg of the deer at the front. I think we're going to start with this and let's, let's see how it does. Okay, if we just have a look at what we're working with, it's got rid of most of the deer and it's kind of left, I don't know what you'd call this, uh, a deer booty, I don't know. But if we deselect this now, if we reset the selection here now, what I'm going to do is paint back over this area and see if we can remove it in one more step. Let's have a look. Hey, that's looking really good actually. It's got rid of the deer sitting down. There is this little bit here. But when I press reset selection, this is not an area that I'd actually painted over. It wasn't going to take care of that anyway. But you can see here, which is a little bit of detail in the grass, which may have been, that's to keep in mind, you might need to paint over the area a few more times. But what I'm discovering about the tool at the moment is it's kind of a race by numbers. It rarely takes care of the image first time. Um, you usually have to do it a few times for it to actually erase it the way you want it to. Okay, so let's really try and take it up another notch. We've got these difficult lines to deal with here. We've got the texture on the pavement, we've got a shadow, and we've got the legs in the image. Can Generace cut this out and do a good job? Let's see how many attempts this one may take. I'm just gonna paint straight over the area again. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm gonna make the brush a bit bigger to take care of a bigger area. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this in two stages. I'm gonna try and take care of the legs first, and then I'm gonna paint over the shadow after. Now, the reason why I'm doing it this way, I actually watched a video by um, Anthony Terman or Thurman, I really apologize if I'm getting your name wrong, Anthony, um, where he showed that actually you have a certain amount or a certain area that you can erase things in in the generase tool before you start losing quality and details. I highly recommend you go and check that video out. I won't go into it here. Um, I'll put a link to that in the description, but it's actually really valuable to know because it can help you use the tool further. Now that is freaky. I don't even know what I could say that looks like. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. That has not erased the legs or it has erased them, but it's replaced them with something strange. Let's reset the selection and let's try this again. I'm just going to paint back over. Okay, now we've got another strange thing. It's struggling with this and I actually thought it might do. Let's just give it another go. Let's reset the selection and try again. Now it might be the case that I actually have to include the shadow and it might do a better job and actually knowing what it's trying to erase. Let's see. I feel like we're getting there, but very slowly. I am going to try, I'm gonna reset the selection, and this is now the fourth attempt. I'm gonna paint over this and the now skinnier leg and the rest of the shadow. And then when we've covered the area, we'll see how it does when we've included the whole lot together. Just get rid of that bit there and give it a go. Well, would you look at that? If we look at the result that it's given us now, we can see that it's actually done a lot better job when I selected the shadow as well. Maybe that's what I should have started with. Maybe it needed to know that the shadow was part of the human and then it could make its computations easier that way. We're just left with this little bit here now, which should be fairly easy to remove. I'll just paint over that quickly and then hopefully it'll fill in this zebra crossing line right here. Okay, we're almost there. We're pretty close. But there is something that you will see at the bottom here, which is this little strange kind of gray rectangle shape. If I zoom in a little bit, you'll be able to see what I mean. Now, this has been reported by other people that have been trying out this. As you can see now, a bit closer up, we've got this strange gray line, and these are particularly difficult to get rid of. If it doesn't do completely the job that you want it to, 
you might find that you could use the clone tool with it and that could take care of little areas like this. So that's definitely something you could use in conjunction with Generace to get the best results. Overall, the image is looking good. It's taken care of something which is particularly difficult, in my opinion. Now, there are a few areas which we could touch up, which would probably take another couple of attempts. All in all, though, we're looking at around about probably eight erases in total to get rid of it. Unless, of course, it was easier to remove if I used the shadow at the start. Now, I want to show you something very interesting and rather suspicious that I found out. If I click on Generace now and then try and erase, let's say we erase this lady here. She's been fired from the job and they don't want her in the group photo anymore. She's now an outcast. I'm going to use select and I'm just going to paint over her again, not paying too much attention to how neat the selection is. And I want you guys to watch what happens when I try and erase her out of the photo. Can you see strange? That's right. We've replaced her and not with someone that you probably want working at the company because she looks part robot. This is the strange thing about this tool. I would say that this is a particularly easy one to fix or easy one to erase, but actually it's replaced. This tool does this sometimes. I've been using it now for around about six days and I've found that quite easy results can actually throw up strange, unexpected things like this. We have a, another woman, which we didn't want. We pressed the erase button. We didn't find ourselves with another button here, which says replace. This could be called currently erase and replace. You can eventually get rid of the woman, but you do find that it will keep replacing this with other people. It's a strange old thing that happens, and I will actually be emailing Skylum to see where they are on this. If this is something that's going to get fixed soon, we don't know but I'll keep you posted with that and we'll see where we get. I want to sum this up for people that are looking at this and they're interested in it, or maybe you just want to know more about it. But let's sum this up and let's look at the pros and cons. In my opinion, it works well with easy to medium images returning good results. You do have to use the erase more than once though. Like I said earlier, it's a little bit like erase by numbers. You have to keep erasing until you remove away and get the result that you want. There is a bit of a low time using this tool and it doesn't seem to make much of a difference what kind of images you're actually using. I found that trying to remove big areas and trying to remove small areas can actually send back the same kind of waiting time. Finally, even on the difficult edits, the ones which you would think that's going to be incredibly difficult to remove. You seem to be able to get there in the end, but it takes quite a long time. And with the loading time, it can be a bit of a put off. Now, one thing I do know about Luminar Neo or Skylab even is that they continually enhance their tools. You usually get the first version sent to you, which is good, but has a few problems. And then over time, they kind of fix this and the tool gets better with further updates. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it beneficial. Remember to hit subscribe and like the video. That helps a bunch. And if you are in the market for this, there's that 31% off coupon in the description. Go grab yourself a bargain there. Whatever you do for the rest of the day, guys, have a good one and I'll see you next time.